welcome to Dear Alice, a lifestyle approach to interior design. Hi guys, I don't know if you have been to our website at alicelanehome.com, but it's such a great way to kind of peruse what we have been curating. We curate from thousands of vendors and my favorite part is our exclusive Jay Bennett collection. Um, these are things that we are designing and building in house and we can't wait to get it in your home and for you to have some one of a kind pieces. Um, there's lots of variety. There's new products added all the time and it's super easy to find what you're looking for. They're broken into categories and it's a pretty website. So please go visit it. Um, and because you're a listener and we love that you're here, we want you to have a discount. So for 10% off, um, use code DEARALICE10 on all your online purchases. We're so excited you're here with us and enjoy the rest of the podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dear Alice. We got a fun one for the people today, don't we? It is juicy, y'all. I'm so excited. <laughs> Buckle your seatbelts. You no, know, 2023 has like taken us by the lapels and we are rearing to talk about juice. color, y'all. I'm juiced. We are juiced over it. Like a juice tiger. Yes. You know? Yes. Like Mike Myers Definitely. talked about. <laughs> and you guys, so I married an ex-murder. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I was about to say, what You need the that? juice tiger. Yeah. Garth Brooks juice diet. <laughs> we love it. It's a, it's a, no, it's a juicer. It's a juicer. Yeah. He yeah. calls it the juice diet. <laughs> And the Garth Brooks Juice Diet. The Garth Brooks Juice <laughs> Diet. Yeah. Such totally. a, such if you haven't movie. watched it, it go comes, watch So I It comes up in life a lot. I find we yes. find ways to say it often. All the time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. Do you guys ever like go back and watch some of these movies that at the time you're like, that was so funny. And you watch it and you're so just like, funny. why is it going so slow? Like this is arch archaically like a sloth. It's just dragging. Yeah. But it was so funny at the time. Do you know why? I feel like life is speeding up. <sighs> really? I feel like, well the now iPhone. like our attention span, <laughs> I blame, I blame Apple. I blame the <laughs> Apple. <laughs> like really, truly, we didn't really have much to do back then, but like watch Dirt Dry and, and watch funny movies that were randomly funny. Every Mike Myers. Once, <laughs> once a thirty minutes, right? And now all of a sudden, oh they tell us on TikTok you've got, you've got exactly three seconds to get a response, right? Oh, that's so much pressure. Not back then. Yeah, we had thirty minutes, you know, to get a response. So yeah, yeah, it's like music too. Songs back then, five minutes long is normal. They're like, uh, there's a saying in writing music now. It's like, don't bore us. Get to the chorus. <gasps> And it's just, oh, wow. yeah. So like they that. want a chorus within the first 30 seconds of the song. <laughs> of course they do. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know. To the we're, point. I think we're right about our point then. We are. No, we let's are. get to the point, That's guys. science. Interessante. Science. Well. Speaking of science. Speaking of science, <laughs> we had an event at Alice Lane that was so fun that we were like, we need to bring our dear, dear Alice friends to our event. Yes. So we're going to just right, do it right now on the podcast. Mm -hmm. So welcome to the Alice Lane Galentine's party. I know, but I'm it's so in excited. spring <laughs> um, Easter party Easter and um, what we did was we did color astrology we read people depending on their birthday they have a color assigned with their birthday to me it's usually in the spectrum of your birthstone but it also says a lot about you yeah. what we learned from studying this little tiny book called color astrology um, who's it by again it's color astrology by Michelle Bernhardt you says, guys, what your birthday color says about you. You guys can buy it on Amazon. It should say like colon, um, science. It should, but it science. doesn't. But what we found is it's 100% accurate to all the people that we've read colors to. And probably we probably read over 50 colors, I'd say. So yeah. everyone is like Valentine's was like, man, that's so true type of thing. Right, Sue? Really? Yeah. Some of them were surprised by the color. Cause I would ask them when they sat down, I'm like, what do you think your color is? Mm -hmm. Cause I think we all innately like have colors that we're drawn to, that we wear, that we love. And there were some surprises in there, which were fun because oftentimes if you even took the color that they thought they were, it would all, honestly, like it would complement mm -hmm. the color that they were, you know, in some realm. And so there was usually some combination that I felt like they could take home with them. Yeah. So it's fascinating. I feel like mine, I was like, well, that's a weird color. But then my write up about who I am, I was like, whoa, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is crazy. How do you know me so well? And so, yeah, it is really fascinating. So we thought it'd be fun for today's intro. Today, we're doing a podcast on color and we're just do stuff about color. And so we were going to do Suzanne's color astrology, Corey's color astrology, and my color astrology to give you guys a little peek into 
a deeper side of who we are and what the science says about us. Yep. And you guys, we should be selling this on the web. We should. But until then, you guys need to buy it on Amazon for $20 or something. Yeah. And it's it's super fun fun gift. I also think keep it on the cocktail table and use it as a party starter. Icebreaker, y'all. Totally. You have somebody awkward come over and you're like, what's your birthday? You're on a weird date. (laughs) You need to find that out. (laughs) You you always keep it in your purse. (laughs) But I think it's like fun if you have a Thanksgiving table or, you know, just like lots of people. It's just a really fun conversation piece. Yeah, it's so much fun. And we're going to get into it. Let's do it. Jesse, what's your birthday? My birthday is August 14th. Okay. What is your sign? I'm a Leo. You're a Leo. Yeah. Which I think is very, I think you're very much a summer. She has blue eyes. Yeah. Yeah. You've always loved the color blue. Um, when I was young, I was obsessed with new kids on the block. Of course. And, um, my favorite new kid was Donnie Wahlberg. Yeah. And I was really sure I was going to marry him one day. Um, and also Donnie's a Leo, which I think... I don't know a lot about star signs, but I'm pretty sure you don't marry your own sign. So I guess we weren't destined to get married, (laughs) but my 11 year old self or however old I was strongly believed that that meant we were perfect for each other. Yeah. Cause you're the same. Cause we're the same. Yeah. Yeah. Which you wanted to be the same with all your friends. You'd be like, what are you wearing today? Mm -hmm. And then you like wear similar things. Cause you're so insecure that you had to come dress alike. And that helped strengthen together. Yeah. (laughs) Totally. That's, that's very much kid logic. Cause I honestly think the best couples are like in a lot of ways, opposites, you know, complimentary. I'm going to say that. Yeah. Yes. I I agree. I think we, okay. For the, that whole color astrology event, we did this whole, I don't know if you've seen it. We'll put it on the, We'll put it on the Instas or something. We had this yeah. whole rad wall that we just pasted up with like amazing quotes on colors and all of our favorite paint colors and just wild images. And I think it was Vincent Van Gogh um, that had a quote up there that's talked about how he would paint in compliments. And so if he was trying to even color like lovers, like he would make sure that the compliment colors were together and just how like it you know, emotionally made the painting better. Oh, fascinating. Yeah, fascinating. Anyway, yes. Color gel. It's science. It is science. So August 14th for Jessica Bennett. Yes. Your color. What did you think your color would be? I figured some sort of shade of blue. Okay. However, my birthstone is peridot, which is that really limey, yellowy green. Which I love. Which yeah. as a young girl, you're so jonesed that you don't, that you didn't get the pearl or the diamond or the pink one or the purple one. And so I was just like almost embarrassed to be like peridot. So sad. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's cool. It's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> like garnet. Anyway. So I was expecting, I was expecting like, well, if it's related to my birthstone, then it's got to be something awful. But Some I definitely or love all shades of blue. So. Okay. Well, her color is teal blue. A couple things about Jess, um, key features is she's popular. She's funny and she's persistent. Those are your power, your power words. Um, if you were born on this day, Jessica Bennett, you have an easygoing manner that bellies your strong will. You are your own person and like to do things your way. Funny and entertaining. That's so true. You guys, this is science. Um, she is super funny and entertaining. Um, you have a wide range of talents. You are a practical and critical thinker. Whether you persevere quietly or are more vocal in your desires, you are rarely thwarted by obstacles or detours. I believe that to be true. Yeah. Um, just so you know, we, we deal in a very luxury space with a lot of impractical things mm-hmm. um, or detours or distractions. And Jess is always the one to like refocus everybody, like focus all of our ADD minds to be like, okay, do we have to do it that way? Cause that's actually not smart mm-hmm. and that's really expensive or that like, there's a better way to do it. She's always been that way. Yeah. I am practical that way. Yeah. Yeah. You're very but practical. also I feel like we have to account ourselves to the client and to their pocketbooks at the end of the day. And if I'm like, that could be less ridiculous. I'm for sure going to be speaking up about something more practical we could do. Yeah. We still want it to be fabulous and we know all of the things we have to work with, but there's almost always a way that we can get it done in a different material mm-hmm. for a fraction of the price or even three fourths of the price. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I think it's worth a study. Mm-hmm. So my brain always does that. Yeah. You're wicked funny. I agree that with is that. That is true. Yeah. So I, and I think funny, witty people are also very smart. Mm. I think it takes smarts to be funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dumb it's a different, it's a, people aren't funny. it's a different kind of funny. It's not a math funny, but I mean, it's not, it's not a math smart, but it's um, a different kind of smart, but I'd rather be funny. Clever. 
and have street smarts, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. For sure. And to be book smart. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Okay. So fun. Okay, Sue. Okay. Well, I'm not done. How oh. does color benefit you? Wearing meditating on or surrounding yourselves with teal blue honors your individuality, yet enhances your interaction with others. Your compatible birthdays, this is fun, is May 31st. August 17th and September 22nd. I did have a best friend with August 17th birthday. Oh, irony. And my husband Science. is May 28th. They say May 31st, but we're That's close. Really close. Very That's close, amazing. right? Yep. During the Galentines, people would always like, and it was crazy. I would say like 50 to 75%. It's a big range. Anyway, uh -huh. people are like, oh my gosh, that's my, that's my husband's or that's my right. boyfriend or my junior high crush. I don't know. Or my ex-wife's uh, birthday. Yeah. yeah. Ex-wives. Okay. Let's go to Corey. Okay. July 24th. July 24th. Pioneer it's day. a pioneer day, baby. Okay. What do you think it is? Um, or what did you think it is? Honestly, I what I thought, and I'll give you the reasoning behind it. I thought it was going to be some sort of orange. Mm -hmm. And I, if I'm remembering, cause this has been a while that yeah. we've, we've done it for me. Um, I think I'm close to that. And this is the reason is because I've always had this like love hate relationship with it. I Don't never, we all? I orange never, is a tricky one. <laughs> yeah. I never wear orange, yeah. but nice. when I do, I know <laughs> when, when I wear, I'm just like, man, I like, like a burnt Power orange. Toy. I'm like, this looks way good on me. Why don't I wear more of it? Yeah. And yeah, I, like I don't know. I just have, yeah. You know yourself. So yeah. that, that okay. was I right? Was I, you were, sir, your color is melon. Mm. Um, a couple of your power words, you're creative. True. Yep. Affectionate. I would say yes. And sensual. Mm, meow. Yeah. Meow. Yeah. Oh, Corey. Okay. Um, Corey, if you were born on this day, which you were, you are a sensual person with a huge appetite for life. You like to live on a grand scale, whether it's the way you decorate your home, the clothes you wear, or the food you eat. You enjoy luxury and excellence. You like to be in position of power and want to be adored and appreciated. That is... Yeah, that's seriously so true. Science. I, love it. I, I think it's so crazy, right? Yeah. I mean, even even at work, I like being affirmed, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, just be like, hey, like you're doing yeah. Cool I, I, shirt. Yeah. Or like you <laughs> good job. Kick ass job. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So that's so true. Uh, Especially the central it. part. I know. <laughs> And when I think about like even your, for your band Spirit City, like your album covers and like when you guys are like how you dress yourselves and everything, it is always in like a really like opinionated editorial, editorial way. Mm -hmm. Super it's, cool. It's yeah. Very unapolog unapologetic. Yeah. Yep. I think that's Thank part you. of all that. So, and you're very creative. So that's science. Hello. Um, how this color benefits you. Your personal color helps balance any um, propensity towards excess. Wearing, meditating on, or surrounding yourself with melon strengthens your center and tempers emotional extremes. Your compatible birthdays are January 24th, April 9th, and December 31st. Mari's December 10th. Oh, so hey. I got the month in there. Oh, hey. Um, awesome. Yeah, I would say that's like pretty accurate for me. Spot on. Yeah. Pretty spot on. It's pretty spot um, on. You guys too said that you could check it out on Instagram. We have lots of pictures of the different colors from that night. Um, if you aren't, if you're new to this podcast and you aren't following us on Instagram, our handle is Alice Lane Home. Right? Yep. yep. At, at Alice Lane Home. Yep. So that's the store side where we put a lot of the stuff. If you love interior design and want to follow the makings of all the homes we're doing, you can also follow at Alice Lane Interiors. Yeah. So those are our two handles, tons of visuals there. A lot of the stuff we talk about is on here. Um, and we're working on getting you guys some really great show notes. But if you want some a quick fix, I think those two Instagram handles are a really great follow and a good way to also see the stuff that we're talking about at all times. Yeah. Yeah. So give us a follow. It's okay. So fun. Suzanne Hall, you are January 17th. All right. Same birthday as Betty White, Muhammad Ali, Michelle Obama. <gasps> no way. Jim Carrey to name a few. Wow. Wow. Powerhouse. I know. Right? Oh my gosh. We all oh. bow down. To yeah. I know. Hall. Seriously. Mine's I know. J I'm JLo and Carl Malone. So I, mean, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't really know what I am, but we should look into that we one should, time. I'm going to. Yeah. Suzanne Hall, what's your birthstone? It's a garnet. It's a garnet. I was always really disappointed by that oh. as a kid. I was just like, it's, it's dirty. <laughs> and garnet. Dark. But you know what? So I think Classic. I've mentioned this on here before, cause I've shown distaste for my sign and my, my birthstone before. And one of you listeners called and said, 
it is your color because you always have a red lip on. Uh huh. You beckon like that's how you source that. I that like power it. On my birthstone. And look so, at the nail color on this girl. I'm always right now a too. red because I'm just a, a pale winter baby. Uh huh. You know, just yeah. this Swedish jeans. You know, so yeah. Garnet's my thing. Yeah. I'm own it. I I'm love gonna that. Own it. Suzanne's color is tandoori spice. This reminds me of like the perfect paint color that you need no matter what called burnt sienna. Yeah. You know what I mean? I know. And it's as I've, like the base of all color, right? It's the best. Like my favorite pair of boots are this color. Yeah. Uh, my favorite jacket is this color. It pairs with, and I went around my house after we mm -hmm. did this one time and I just took pictures because I was like, I you know, I have a lot of art. It's a lot of random, but this color's at the root of everything. Yeah. You know, in combination with a lot of things. I love all colors. Yes. I don't discriminate against any color, but I love this color in combination with all things. So it is my color. Totally. And tandoori spice. The three words that describe you are dynamic. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Intricate. Also agreed. Yeah. And colorful. That's wow. so true, yes. right? Science, yes. guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys, besides reading um, everybody's color astrology to them, Suzanne went on to choose paint colors for their home. Mm -hmm. Wish we could do that for all of you today. It was so fun. It but really was. It was like kind of in relation to finding a way to have them surround themselves with their color, even if only for painting a, a piece of furniture or painting a powder bath mm -hmm. or maybe a full room with it. Yeah. And right? you can kind of look at a person, even like with what they're wearing, what they're comfortable. And this was like a lovely night that people like got dressed up for and like just a bunch of gals hanging out. But like you could look at them and like kind of understand their hue or what like saturation they might be. Or if like, no, I need to be like a little funkier. And so I'm going to take that color and I'm going to bend it this way. Yeah. So even though this is saying one color, like know that there was some shift as we picked the paint colors, but it was really mm -hmm. fun because they felt some connection, whether it was like the nail color that they chose on their next appointment day yeah, or a room that they were going to remodel that they were going to try it in. Um, so it was fun. so much fun and people just had the best time. I think anytime that like anybody personalizes something for us, we're like, oh my gosh, they see inside my soul. Yeah. That's what this is like. Totally. Yeah. So fun. Okay. If you were born on this day, you have you have passion and presence and you are a force to be reckoned with. Your perception and intellect are highly developed. Congrats, Sue Hall. Smart. And you are usually one step ahead of everyone else. You want to make a difference and you have an impact on society. So it's important to you to follow your dreams without losing your center. That's brilliant. I love that. <gasps> That's so good. I love that. I love I that got too. cold chills. Science. <laughs> so good. Okay. How this color benefits you. Your personal color helps accentuate your true calling. Wearing, meditating on, and surrounding yourself with tandoori spice encourages you to rest and be um, receptive wherever it is appropriate. Your compatible birthdays, April 23rd. Anybody? No. July 20th. Tom's such a seven, seven and my favorite number is seven. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And, <laughs> and, oh my gosh. <laughs> and August 1st. You're in August and we're yeah. so compatible. I know. <laughs> Stop it. You guys, that is color astrology. If you feel like you're a believer now, we highly recommend color astrology by Michelle Bernhardt, um, published by Quirk. Um, it's a tiny little book that's maybe oh, like six by six, six inches by six inches. And it is a bundle of fun. Yeah. You highly keep recommend. It in your big purse and like, go ahead and order a bunch of them and like, give them, them as your gifts. Stockings, like it's so oh much gosh, fun. It's such a good birthday, birthday gift. gift. Well, if you have like a friend that's like a believer in, you know, universe and Science. signs and all the things, I think they're going to love that. You know, but even yeah. there were a couple of skeptics in the audience. Yeah. I got to say when I was reading, they're sure. like, I don't know about this. Tell me what it is. And I was like, I could, I could feel their hesitancy when I was about to read to them. I'm like, well, anyway, and I got, I don't know. There's truth. It's always right. There's some, there's some yeah. real truth there guys. And so totally, I'm a believer. So I'm a believer too. I'm science. a believer. Science, you don't even have to believe it. Cause it's science. It's I love it science. so much. Let's talk about color. I went to Oprah. I that bet she a, would dig it. I think so too. Cool. Favorite things. Yeah. We Let's didn't write talk. the book, but we're going to go ahead and send it to Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> love no. it. XOXO dear Oprah. Oprah. <laughs> we love this book. <laughs> love it's dear Alice. <laughs> Yep. Today we're like going to carry this theme on um, to talk about some other items of color. Um, we found this really great article in El Decor 
Um, and it's called these seven colors will be everywhere in 2023. And what a statement. It's such a catch. Like I, I was like, I saw that and I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect for our segue into color. Cause I think everybody wants to know, cause I think we're all feeling it. What's new. What's next. Yes. Well, yeah. I feel like we're all like, we're craving saturation. Yeah. We're, we're talking about deep rooms. Like we're talking about just this totally. interest. Cause I do think that people act differently when they're in color. Amen. And I think they feel differently and they act differently because they feel differently. Right. Totally. And your children, we, and we designate certain colors for certain things because they're, they ignite something or they diffuse something. Mm -hmm. And so it's just fascinating that, um, the seven colors that we're going to talk about are so interesting. There's yeah. nothing dull about it. I also feel like I'm seeing it in fashion and maybe my eyes are just quickened to it because I know it's happening. Mm. But I mean, actually the subline for this article is buckle up for a rainbow renaissance. Bam. Mm. <laughs> I'm feeling, so good. I'm feeling the rainbow renaissance too. in a big way. Yep. Like I, if you look at high end fashion, um, we're, we record obviously earlier on than when this po podcast airs, but right now New York fashion week has been going on mm -hmm. and it's fun every once in a while an Instagram live pops up and you're like, Oh my gosh, I got to watch, you know? Mm -hmm. So I watched the Chanel show. I watched mm -hmm. the Burberry show. I'm watching yeah. because I want to see what's next, yeah. what's yeah. coming, you know, for fashion. But that always connects back to interior interiors and the choices people are making today. And some of them I feel like are doing it because it's editorial and it's a splash and not everybody's going to do it. But I have to tell you across the board, everybody's using way more color in their fashion. I feel totally. it. Yeah. And I feel being drawn to that too. Like that's what I want to buy now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, yep. can't wait. Let's get into it. Okay. All right. The seven colors that will be everywhere in 2023. Um, here's a little quote. If you guys, if you're a design enthusiast, you may have heard of Mario Buada. He's just like renowned. He was the Prince of Chintz, um, <laughs> is what I learned of him at. And he always just like, he was not afraid of color. And he, this was a quote at the beginning of the article. It says, there isn't a shade of color I've ever seen that I haven't liked. Uh, Mario Buada with characteristic wit observed, um, the late great decorator who passed away in 2018 would be pleased then to see on the spectrum of shades and tints that are poised to dominate our homes in the year ahead. Gone are the days of straight laced all white rooms. Instead, as we emerge from three, have we got that right? Three years of uncertainty. Experts predict a rainbow bright renaissance. Hello. It's a shift. What? It's yeah. a total shift. It's yeah. a response. Mm. Hello. I yep. love that so mm. much. Yep. That's so good. Um, they also talk about colors warming up. Yes. So we're no longer in this place. Well, it says one of the most significant themes we've identified for 2023 is warmth. Sherwin Williams, Sue Wadden affirms people are moving away from cool grays that define the past decade and exploring hues that exude kindness, serenity, and empathy. And we do feel the warmth. Mm -hmm. We're not doing gray anymore at all. If you guys are choosing gray today, um, catch up. <laughs> I, it's just such a terrible choice right now because it's already clotted and we need to get on the bleeding edge because these choices you're going to make right now are going to last the next decade. If you're doing gray, you're going to be feeling like a laggard the minute it's, it's dried on the walls. You know what I mean? Do you want to know when I like when gray became into fashion, it was when Michelle Obama wore the gray nail polish. Do you remember that? So Not at like, all. It was in like their time in the white house. And I remember that became a thing and they're like, what is her nail polish color? And I felt like that was like the beginning of gray. And even that gray was more interesting, like probably had like a little taupe in it or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That made it more interesting. But like right now, I think we're just all so tired of gray. Put totally. on a gray shirt and tell me if you, what it does for your skin tone. Yeah. It's not doing anything. I also feel like, because like the opposite of gray, if you want, if you're in the neutral would be taupe. Yeah. I even feel like the topes are warming up. Really? Like think of the number one fashion trend right now in jackets is the trench coat. Mm -hmm. That's beige. Yep. You know what I mean? That's a really, really warm version of taupe. And so I remember in the eighties, beige was a thing. It's such a stupid uh -huh. word too. <laughs> Everybody had beige walls in their house. And Cindy Mancini, the beige totally. leather jumpsuit with a fringe. Hello. That was off white leather. Don't off you remember? White, yeah. But she definitely was very tan. Yeah. No. So she looked beige in it with the blonde hair and all that. It's but crazy. anyway, I just, I just think it's important for all of us to sit here and talk about this on Dear Alice so that we help each other not make mistakes. Yep. Yeah. And even like, if you're like looking even at white oak floors we're warming that up yeah we, we have are. been for a little while warming like we, and darkening yeah we're not doing gray tone floors they've always been a little bit warmer we're always trying to lean 
I feel like we've even like during the gray, we're like, we don't want to get too cold. No, it doesn't feel right to our yeah. souls. Right. So that needed some warmth. And so even though we're like kind of getting more saturated and a little bit deeper in the tone of the wood, um, we're definitely like exaggerating the warmth and feeling more, a little bit more like old school and timeless that way, mm -hmm. which feels so, so good and a lot more rich. Yep. Totally yeah. gone are the days of taupe and white interiors, gray and white interiors. We're actually using real life color. If you're neutral, you're warming that way up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's so fun and yeah. exciting. And you're probably contrasting. Even if you are yeah. neutral, you're seeing some like more interesting contrasts mm -hmm. in the space and combination of items. Yeah. Totally. Um, besides uh, warming colors up, they say there are also some surprises in the mix. According to the color experts we spoke to, namely the emergence of genre of literally out of this world colors, quote unquote, near neons and hyper brights are also so making excited. a comeback driven by the metaverse, which colors um, and impact on both digital and physical realms. It entails bold, vivid hues, especially the Gen Zers begin decorating their first homes. Fascinating, I right? I mean, I know like I have a purse um, that Gucci makes and it's got neon straps on the handles. And I bought that um, two Christmases ago. And I remember being like, what is this crazy thing on my bamboo handles? And um, you could get, the purse comes in a couple of different sizes and you could get neon yellow, mm -hmm. you get the neon orange, or you could get the neon pink. Mm -hmm. Those are your only options. You had to get a neon strap. Now you couldn't buckle it, but then it would like lose its sense yeah. of fashion. And totally. I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is so fun. It feels like a shot in the arm. Oh, and wow. I got the neon orange on my white bag. I love it. And it's been so, so fun to just try and embrace that. That. And I remember neons for the first time in the 80s. You know, I was born in 1975. So I was a kindergartner when I started the 80s. And it was all about like paint splattered neons. Ooh, and you that's just free. Yeah, you just said yes. neons and party brights in the biggest way. And that's where we are. Right? Yeah. Yes. I don't know fashionably if we're quite as amateur hour. But I feel like we're using it in restraint as a really cool That's fashion a really round little accent accessory to other like secondary colors that are rich in their hue. Totally. It looks awesome. It looks, it looks young, I it think. Looks, yeah. And I think if even like look at Nike and like they're brilliant, but like and they've been in this lane for a long time. I mean, everybody loves them. But especially right now, their designer stuff has all this and it has for like the last several years. And it's it's definitely a statement. I'm here for it. That's why I think it says near neon too. Cause it's not like straight up. Yeah. Straight up like eighties neon, mm -hmm. but it's like maybe on the warmer tone of that and the more like when realistic. When it has more depth to it. Yeah. I think yeah, there's more depth, depth and it doesn't feel like a shallow color. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. have lots of layers that are mixed like into that. it. Yep. Yeah. So. But there, it's usually a liner or a mm. slight, slight detail that makes it kind of have a little, a little slap in the face. Or something. Yeah, yeah. And it feels young and it feels mm -hmm. hot, mm -hmm. which I really love. Okay, let's get into Suzanne's favorite color, green. We've said it before <laughs> and we're going to say it again. Um, and, and it's here again. Green shows no sign of fading in our homes. And it's a surefire bet. So Suzanne Hall, let's talk about your favorite color. It's always okay. been Sue's Su favorite color. It always has. Let's talk about the shades that are really hot right now. Yeah. Um, there's a few different ones. Let's see. Da, 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 da. They're saying sage da. again, whether you oh, offer soothing yep. sage or pale pistachio. <laughs> yep. The soothing sage or pale pistachio, the huge will remain in fashion for years to come. Um, we've definitely seen an increased interest in greens this year with the shades representing three of our top six colorways for 22. Um, I want to say that they were going for like a deeper, I think there was a deeper green. Sorry, I'm fumbling. Benjamin Moore's color of last year was called October Mist. Mm -hmm. And um, other experts we spoke to predicted an uptick in punchier, truer greens. The line. Yep. Look no further than Backdrop's recently released hue, Troop Beverly Hills, a vivid <laughs> emerald. Speaking of the 80s. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Everybody, can, so fun. everybody can think of, you know, Troop Beverly Hills and the green sash. And yes. if you're a Girl Scout, you know the depth of that punchier, truer green. Um, I yep. love what they say too. What makes green? Well, it's evergreen. So like this, the idea that like green has never really gone out of style. It's shifted in its tone. Um, it will, it will always be in. It's just like what shade of green mm -hmm. is trending at the very moment. I feel that. And I think the whole idea of evergreen, I think everybody is turning 
a lot more to nature, especially like during the pandemic, post pandemic, we just all craved getting outside. And I think that really is part of it. I think we feel alive when we're in and around green. I think there's just, I think most rooms too, if your room is falling flat, put a tree in it, put some life in it. I agree. And it will 100% shift it mm -hmm. and make it so much, you'll be happier in the room with the addition of green. I, yep. I'm an advocate. So true. There's something like, my life. there's something like soothingly ener energetic about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's not like energy, like you're bouncing off the walls, but it's like, Oh, like I'm alive type of thing. Exactly. Um, the director of Pantone's color Institute says my students hear me lecture over and over and over again about using green as a neutral color. She says mother nature uses it ubiquitously in plants and foliage. Watch for this hue in everything from marble to marble to tile to furnishings in the year of head. So I green guys. It. Yeah. Yeah. I feel totally. like we're all really comfortable with that idea, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Fashionably, whether you take it in, um, you know, that's up to you, but I think in your homes, you just can't avoid it. I feel like, like if nothing else, the house plant is so mage. Exactly. Have you been into it more? Cause I know there was a time where you're like, you know, the nineties green, which I yeah. feel is like a dusty, like there was green. sage green. I still hate sage. Okay. Hate well, it. Why do you hate it? I was so overdone. Well, I'm sorry, mom. I, <laughs> sorry, Polly. I know you're the number you. one listener of Dear Alice, but um, she still has sage carpet today. You know, like she built at a time when that yeah. was so hot. Yeah. And they invest in really lovely, very expensive, high pile. Finishes. Yeah. And it's this great, it's in great shape. Nobody lives in the house, but my mom and dad, and they have 8,000 square feet of it, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of carpet, but, um, you know, and her house reads like an old English hotel and it still fits lots of mahogany railings and stuff like that. But, um, and then also my dad had an eye clinic. He's an eye doctor and it was all hunter green. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, we lived in a green world. Yeah. That was it. That was the only color we knew. So you probably and related so to Richfield too. I just, I just... Bit. I think that it's, it's a time capsule color for me mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't say that I'm moving forward mm -hmm. for me. Like I want to yeah. experience the whole spectrum. And so I, um, I don't know. I don't feel cute and green though. I don't wear it that much. Yeah. I don't reach for it. I guess mm -hmm. I'd probably reach for other things first, but I don't hate it now when I see it. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't feel like it's dated when I see it. It feels fresh again mm -hmm. because we're so far beyond, you know, the nineties and colors are just becoming more interesting. Growing up, they really, that's a really so. good point. Say that again. I think the colors are becoming more interesting. And I think the way we're selecting them, it's not like, it's not literal. Yeah. We're not being good because we want something with more depth and ambiguity to it. Yep. And so I think those are the greens that we're reaching for. And those are fascinating. Totally. And um, I can't remember what article I read it in, but there's more, um, shades of green than any other color on the, really? the spectrum. Fascinating. Isn't that interesting. Yeah. So that whole, like the whole mother earth and just totally. the realm of greens that you see when you do explore the globe, like is, it's incredible. Yeah. And yeah, it does. It does they give all a have their life. place too, you know? Yeah. Later yeah. on this article, first dibs, um, they were kind of going through the, their, hottest colors from last year and in, in their search uh -huh. we use first dibs all the time if you haven't been on first dibs please go explore it is the most fun yeah and it's not just for like the wealthiest of wealthy they're like there are other there's a good spectrum and it's just a really good step back into time and into taste mm -hmm. i think but they're three if top nothing colors. else yeah. i would say go to first dibs to inform your taste yes, inspired right yeah. and then you can figure out how to make that happen for yourself within your budget however you want to but i think first dibs is a real true north yeah. for most people with great taste yeah. so do that at the very least if we're ever looking for like a little arc digest moment or mm. a chair or something we go to first dibs because we want something that no one else has in this space so go there it's super fun Love cherish that. is also a good one um but first dibs their three colors of last year of their top search engine was emerald green Top sage green second and burnt orange. So I thought it was interesting that the two Ooh. greens at the t were at the top um, as another plug for my homeboy green right there. I love it. I love it so much. I have to say Hermes did a lot for making the color orange extraordinary and sophisticated. Oh, they, right? yes. Yeah. yeah. Like I, like I've said, I've oh. never been a huge like fan of it, although there, yeah, but the way that they've used it and like the tones sort of, of the, orange, le the leatheriness of it. Yeah. It's just like, it just, it looks like it would just smell good, exactly. you know? Yeah. 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 So good. 
Also, guys, if I sound like I'm a baritone, it's because I am right now. <laughs> I'm getting over a third cold this winter. <laughs> anyway, the third wave. And you're like, that Jessica, she really needs to sound peppier. He's a fisherman's friend. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay, moving on. Second color, cool lavenders and lilacs. I'm stoked about this. Really? Yeah. Oh, I good. Love... Tell me why you're excited. Um, I've always loved the color purple, mm-hmm. and Mari's favorite color is purple. And then just kind you guys of like meant to be yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. and uh, science. science, exactly science. <laughs> um, I don't know. There's just something soothing but artistic about it as well. Yep. Yeah, to me. Totally. So it, it's it just feels like feels right. It, yeah, it, it feels like it's energizing my mm-hmm. creative ability. Totally. I have to say, one of my favorite bedrooms we've ever done it, Dear Alice, is for our project called the Coastal Contemporary. And the husband, actually, his favorite color was lilac. And he would wear lilac or lavender shirts. And he was a big guy, like 6'4", and, you know, well built. Mm-hmm. He wasn't like a soft, small, you know, kind of a guy. Mm-hmm. And it was so fun getting to know more about him. And we did a lavender bedroom for them, like a dusty kind of lavender. So gorgeous. So gorgeous. We have to put that. We'll put yeah, that up on Instagram so for you guys to see. But um, it wasn't it wasn't feminine. It had a, a really beautiful, peaceful quality to it, but yeah. still had a lot of strength because of the things we paired it with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say again, the depth of the color of purple, because you can have like ones that feel juvenile. Yeah. You know, that like feel like well, my little pony. My those, li- aren't yeah. the, those aren't the purples we're talking about. We're talking about the dusty, you know, lavenders, those type of things. And then also like the richer ones as well that just have gumption to it. Totally. You know, totally. They say an emerging color trend that demonstrates the power of newly initiated Gen Z consumers is a rinse and soft, dusty shades of lavender and lilac. First dibs, a digital antiques marketplace saw interest in lavender spike in 2022, up 14% over 6% approval from the previous year. So anyway, um, they're calling it the shade that they've dubbed it is digital lavender. Everywhere from Jill Sanders collections to Mercedes Benz concept vehicles to, I don't know, Andre Reisinger, his virtual furniture. So anyway, it's, it's a thing, you guys. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. We did that lavender bedroom almost, it's probably been about nine years ago. I was guessing 10. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to say that color doesn't really go out of style. If you do it, if you know your color, I think back back to the colorology, right? Just understanding what you're naturally drawn to and what science tells you. Um, Yeah, (laughs) if you surround yourself in those colors, yeah. um, If it's like your color and you interpret it in a beautiful way, I guess the whole house isn't lavender. Much like we talked about, my whole world was green. So I get that you can overdo it, but you guys at least dip your toe in the water and go for the powder bath and emerge it, immerse it in a color and just mm-hmm. feel that excitement yep. or do another space, a home office or something that has a door that you can shut. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. But you've got to just play around with it this year. It's really, really fun. And like we say, if it's not in style, it'll never go out of style. So if it's your Cheers. style, yeah. put it in your house. Yep. So it's great. I like this part. It says it's a sensorial shade that connects to holistic well being and digital optimism. They tell us this shade poses that much needed cautious optimism an escapism that people are craving post pandemic. Mm. There's really something quite soothing yeah. about the shade. Yeah. I think I have to say life has not gotten easier since the pandemic. No, We're not wearing masks and we're not scared for our lives, but we're still not completely well. No, there's an uneasiness says the girl recovering from a cold, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but the do third you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah but know? I just, I still think, I don't know. We've had this huge spike in, um, what do you call it? Um, prices and oh yeah, uh, inflation. Inflation, inflation yeah. yeah. And so there's a huge amount of uncertainty there. I think jobs are going to start to be more and more scarce. The real estate market is a huge question mark for everybody. And so I think that even though we're not fighting a pandemic, it's a different type of uncertainty. And so yeah. I love that they're just the way they're speaking about this is that it's um. It gives us optimism and escapism. Cautious, cautious optimism. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Totally. It's imaginative and creative and also speaks to hope and balance. I feel like we're in the aftershocks of the earthquake right now. Yeah, totally. You know? Yeah, but it's still happening, right? We're still getting yeah, like we're still getting our shakes. system yeah. in one way or the next. Um, I will say purple, my experience in purple. Um, grew up in LA, so I love the Lakers, so oh, I love yeah. purple. Mm-hmm. But when we moved into this house, 
she had the whole bathroom on the main floor painted like this warm shade of purple, <laughs> really interesting shade of purple. Um, and she painted everything, the cabinetry, the, like the walls, the ceiling, everything. Just it's like, a, I, just it's like a I one, like to. It's a one color paint job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Oh my gosh. I like, I was getting ready in there. One she's day she's like, been in there so long. She's starting <laughs> to like it. She's like, <laughs> somebody, somebody throw her a rope. It's, it's, it's Stockholm syndrome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Guys, even oh, when amazing. I pass, but just like the power of color, even when I pass by it, like even in combination with my rugs and my, in my hallway and the art that I've put on my walls, uh -huh. I'm just like, why does this darn purple color still get along? Oh, I love it. I love it. And like, um, yeah, I don't know. Power to the purple. I'm That's amazing. It. That's all. Lean okay. in. The third color that we're going to talk about is orange. Here's your color. It's my color. There you That's go, Corey. Color. Corey. Let's 2023. Do it. I know. They say the 80s are officially back. Cheers. Yeah. I'll cheers to that. You know. That's great. Um, <laughs> let's see. Orange as a Pantone. Um, Pantone Eisman's pointed out he constantly remained at the bottom of the totem pole. Speaking of orange, okay. but her team's research has indicated that the hue is definitely on board for next year. It's a trend also mirrored in WGSN's reporting. Saturated tones will return yet in solid color segments, enabling new forms of self-expression like fiery orange. And while some designers might opt for the saturation versions of the shade on walls, many will use the pigment and pop and pop it in furnishings. And then they go on to say that um, tangerine is also an accent of choice and it's a combination. Uh, there are creative opportunities to put colors together and really tax your imagination. Tax your imagination. Know, that's so good. I feel it feels athletic to me. Orange does. Yeah. I feel like athletes wear it really, really well. And then it feels sporty to me. Yeah. And that's part of the reason I hate it. Cause when I was rock climbing, like every rock climbing thing that they make is in bright orange. And it's like, dude, do I need to like, look like a, look a, like a cone walk. out here? You know what I mean? <laughs> like I'm trying to stop traffic, but yeah, uh, yeah, it was, so that's, that's why I didn't like it. But I will say this like, about like this photo that we're looking at here with like the orange, like it really does like bring out every, I don't know, like the blue, like on, on, the, on the plates. Yeah. And, and like the well, wood, like those wood, yeah. Like bar stools, like it just makes it feel rich. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know. I do love that about it. So good. I'm coming into myself, you know, they're, they're also saying in the article that homeowners and designers are also drawn to the earthier terracotta tinged shades. In fact, according to first dibs, latest trend research, quote unquote, burnt orange was its most popular color behind you guessed it. Emerald and sage green. Yep. So it is on the climb. It is on. And I feel like this is something that we've been pulling for a little while now. Like there's this like toffee burnt orange colored mohair mm -hmm. that you throw it on anything. You're just like, oh my gosh, that just came alive. And we did it. We did this amazing sectional in Angie Harrington's home. You need to go on our yes. portfolio and go see the, not one sectional, but two, two sectional pieces that we did in her family room in this burnt orange, like really earthen It's almost color. like rust. And it's yeah. kind of that idea. Yes, it is a bold color. And yes, it was a risk, but it becomes so neutral yeah. when paired in that combination, like they're and talking it's about. so rich. It's yeah. fascinating. You put it with green, mm -hmm. like all her plants and everything. And you're like in another world. It is so pretty. And it just adds such a level of richness to that home. And you're like, gosh, she, whoever lives here must be fun. It brightens colors around it. Yeah, it totally brightens colors around it. And That's it just makes amazing. it more interesting. It's like getting a really great handbag and like the perfect color leather. And the best clothes. shoes. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Mm, so good. So, go orange. Number four is, um, is brown, light brown. They're saying forget gray. Brown is 2023's new neutral. Amen. Right? Yeah, to that. Yes. We feel that in like the nail colors, like at the end of last year too. Like we started seeing like these deep tones of totally of brown. I, we felt brown. They're saying light brown, like milk chocolate, but we saw like semi sweet chocolate at market. Yeah two years ago yeah. coming and we were like, we're yes, <laughs> it's like this richer, more sophisticated, a little bit more alive than black. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want, yeah. And I want to say there's like brown, but then there's like a little a shot of like purple in there. Like oh, espresso in there. So good. And yeah. We've been, so, so ever rich. since we saw the sectional and we were feeling brown, we started making these, it's called Giorgio velvet Euro shams for the bed at Alcyon and pairing it with the white bedding. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. You guys, brown. I'm feeling it. 
So Me they're too. talking about light brown. I'm saying all shades of brown. I agree. But um, they're saying it's 2023's new neutral. In fact, all varieties of this cozy shade are appearing in the color forecasting tea leaves. Light browns, dark browns, and beiges are making a comeback because of their earthiness, meaning they will ground us and help us feel more connected to the beauty and restorative properties of nature, says Wadden of Sherwin-Williams. Interessante. Also, you know what I've seen that is also back? Mm -hmm. In like a really big way. I mean, especially if you look at an RH catalog, travertine. You know what? It's true. Yeah. It's not as chiseled on the edges. Mm -hmm. um, travertine I think we all remember it from like the 2000s and it was just like really pitted and it was just like fictitiously like yes it was like patterned, on, patterned on the edges yeah. and I'm like what earthquake did that go through like that's such a bummer yeah but they're like they're really quite beautiful I remember yeah it kind of looks like a root beer float to me mm -hmm. do you know what I mean it's like kind of yeah. bubbly and Mm -hmm. Shades of like white and brown all kind of mm -hmm. coming together. You, yeah. you grimace when you talk about it. Trevor and, Teen? Yeah. And I remember like you, maybe we were talking about it a year ago, maybe getting some stuff made in it. And Trevor Teen is always an option for us. We're still saying, you know what, Corey, let's just still make that in marble. Because mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. It feels too soon. Yeah. You know what I mean? I it also doesn't feel like as much of a quality item as marble. Mm. If you're going to choose it, it's very earthy. I can see that. It depends. Like, let's say you're building There's a contemporary in Southern sure. Utah, travertine, hundred percent. It's mm. a really nice earthy way to get it done. And they don't want marble. It's and it too doesn't, it, it, it's not as, doesn't have as much depth as like, you know, a marble or something yeah. like that. So I, I, I get that. Mm -hmm. Why I like it though, is it's not, it's not like the Tuscany travertine that was like early 2000s, mm -hmm. you know, like Suze was talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It has like a different quality of, I'm, I'm not saying it's, you know, travertine, the stone itself has, I, I, the way it's being presented yeah. is, is, is different. And that's why I like it. Totally. And, and it's used in like new, more like modern contemporary shapes too. Okay. It's not yeah. like, yeah. Some of the samples that I've seen recently, can I come in from reps and even as we've been exploring some like exterior spaces, like in California and things, it's a, it's a smoother, mm -hmm. more consistent, not as mystery meaty. As early 2000s, yeah. I think was forcing it to be. Yep. But I think inherently it has some really good qualities. And I think when combined with plaster and things, I think it's really, it's, yep. it's quite lovely. And I think all these earthen tones that they're talking about, yeah. I think have that quality. Yeah. Um, with the light browns, the taupes, like any of those and they're things neutrals, which are going to feel very like California. Totally. You know, outdoor living. And I think that's, I think it's something we all crave. There's a casualness to it totally. also. Super relaxed. Yeah. And we've yeah. kind of come from a marble space, mm -hmm. a lot of black and white checkered entry. So mm -hmm. this just it's like editorial lets you like lay down the shoulders mm -hmm. a little bit and take a deep breath and do yoga. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly. Yoga, Outside. Right? Yeah. 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 For, For sure. My, on my polished travertine <laughs> patio. Yes. Okay. Next color. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm excited about this one. Mustard. Yes. Yeah. Suze, do you remember when we were like, you were helping us like choose and we actually Dude, chose a I, mustard. I like, chose it for you. Yeah. And you guys and didn't do it. I know. It was really rad. There was this really cool. Decor Suzanne is a color enabler. <laughs> I know. I'm like, she's like a pusher. I was all, I'm not, I'm not shifting no. blame to any, someone that's not no. here, but my wife, like after that, she was like, I if we slept on it. She's like, I don't think I can do it. I just really want green. But if it so was the right again. tone, it wasn't amateur hour. Yeah. Like, it could, it could be rad. Mm -hmm. Anyway, look at this photo right here that, I mean, you, I know you guys can't, see, can't it, but, see it. Um, one great. thing I love about that, the ornate, uh, molding is just like <laughs> done in the same color as the wall. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's the seventies guys. Yeah, so. It's awesome. Yeah. Or and especially reals. when you pair it with Brown, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think there's some people generationally that won't be able to go there. Yeah. But that's okay. I think for those of us, those, those people who haven't seen it before, I think they're going to be all in with it. Um, yellow in general, it just like makes us happy. Like, yeah. I think it's just like sci science. Scientifically, it has yeah. proven like yellow is a happy color. It brings like even in like the Disney movies when they're trying to exude joy, they put yellow on the person, yeah. you know? And so anyway. Really? It says, do you prefer honey or Dijon? Yellow or hearty whole grain? Whatever your preference for mustard, it's a go for 2023. In addition to raspberry blush, Ben Moore named khaki colored Savannah green as part of the forecast for next year, almost like gold leaf for your walls. This mm. rich ochre features a balanced undertone of green and yellow. So anyway, yeah, mustard yellow items are on a platform. They just are loving it. 
So they're saying you can use it from your walls to textured bouquets. Um, it does add warmth to a room. Mm -hmm. And I think however you want to do it mm -hmm. and whatever type of mustard you prefer, it's all in. Yeah. I got during their early sale, I got this, like, it was one of the acrylic resin tables in this, oh. like, mustard color. And yeah, so it has yes. this level of polishing, polished uh -huh. to it. And translucent. Um, and translucent, but I have it kind Mystery. of layered over my Luca, and it oh. makes me so happy. Yeah. And um, whenever I see it, I'm like, that looks designer. So I think anytime you can even, like, even if it's in a small dose in your paintings, and, you ah. know, it doesn't necessarily, if you're not ready for the whole color everywhere, try out on a dose. The next bouquet of flowers, get yourself something you know, exactly. like saturated yeah. in your roses mm -hmm. in that color or, or whatever the color is, the flower of your choice. Right. Yeah. But just try it in those saturations and see how it makes you feel. I, I totally think, love that. I, I think love it's that a really, advice. I think it's a good experiment for you to yeah. play with. Cause I think especially as we're kind of like going spring into summer, um, I think it's a color you're going to be seeing everywhere. And I think it's a good compliment. It's like, adding, I like how they said gold leaf. It's mm -hmm. like adding gold to a room. Yeah. You're really adding yellow. So pretty. To a room. It's beautiful. Speaking of Oli, I got a beautiful French oh, armchair yes, in yellow did. mohair. And um, it's usually in my entry hall and I just moved it into my bedroom. And my bedroom's quite neutral. And that little bit of yellow and crisp white trim is giving me life right now. Right? It's really good. It's surprisingly neutral. It pairs well with everything going on in my bedroom and I just want it in another spot. It's so good. It's so happy. Yeah. I'm totally here for it. Yeah. No, I've yeah. been feeling it lately. It's just happy. It feels optimistic almost. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So next color is rose. 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 Oh. It's so cute, right? I know. Um, I think Adam has a Jewish aunt named Rose. Cute. I know. I love that. Yeah. So cute. Mm. Um, they're saying uh, next year's outlook is rosy, according to color forecasters, from bright fuchsias to delicate neutral leaning pinks. On the subtle end of the spectrum, Sherwin Williams inaugurated Reddened Point, a serene gray pink. That's an interesting visual, a serene gray pink as its 2023 color of the year. I didn't know that that was their color of the year. Not fun too. Like this, so when you think of that, when you think of gray, but then you're adding or pink and you're adding a little bit of gray to it, it just yeah. it neutralizes it, right? They and say, it warms up the gray. Yep. So there you so go. they say this gorgeous hue tells a story about warmth, exploration, and the importance of self care. It's a perfect example of warm, versatile, and unexpected neutrals we expect will become increasingly sought after in 2023. So anyway, yeah. Pantone, meanwhile, named Viva Magenta. As it's color of the year, we've seen lots of that too. Which was like, for a while, I have not agreed with Pantone. I yeah. gotta be honest. I'm like, they're Same. off the mark. Yeah. But Viva Magenta They're just, just like, trying to shock us. I know. Yeah. I'm like, that's not really. But when I saw Viva Magenta, I was just like, yeah, buddy. Like, I felt like that saturation was so great at the end of 2022 to feel that. Totally. And related to that, um, First Dibs predicts that Mauve is also making moves. Making a comeback. So that's fun. The company saw a 4% increase in interest for Mauve in 2022. Another indication that the 80s vibes are in our future. Mm -hmm. And They're here's, and there's more Benjamin Moore named Raspberry Blush. 2008-30 is the color as its color to watch in 2023. Mm -hmm. So interesting. All of these are in the warm, the warm hues. We love seeing Raspberry Blush in all of our four walls to make a bold color statement. When I read that, I was like, I want to do that. I think that sounds so fantastic. Really? And mix it with tandoori spice a little bit, like raspberry yeah. and tandoori. I love oh, it. Yeah, raspberry yeah. blush and tandoori spice. I love it. We particularly love it in a dining room as a modern blushed update to the classic deep red dining room. I love that. That's really fun. Or for those who want to dip their toe into bold color water, um, it's a great way for a ceiling um, <laughs> or said accent wall. a painted piece of Ew. furniture. <laughs> we cross that out because we don't believe I in know, the accent wall. I just wall. want you guys still to know that that's not okay. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. it. And then we're going to round you out with color number seven. Which I love this. Yes. I think this is so pretty. It's um, color, color number seven is powder blue. Hmm. I think, I mean, since the beginning of Alice Lane and since science school, everything blue has always been like the, like everybody loves blue. It's the number everybody one color Raymond. in everybody home decor. Blue, yeah. Right. Yeah. And like everybody agrees with it. They're comfortable with mm -hmm. it. Um, but, and so I loved that it was still on the spectrum, but I love that it was like 
they say powder blue. I wrote Italian. Yeah. Cause we, I think we've just in the store, we've always like, Oh, if you can get an Italian blue, like that beautiful boat on the water right. and yes, and in those slim Aaron's paint or totally. photograph. And like, that's the blue you want. It's intriguing. It's a sexy man on a vacation. That's Italian blue. That's it. Yep. I love it. I do too. I love Italian blue. That's so fun. And it looks good with all these other colors. Definitely. Like Ex- you can always add a little bit of Italian blue. And it, uh, it's a neutral. I totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree. It's I, also appearing in our homes via pale powdery blues in particular. Experts say it exemplifies a collective desire for calm in a crazy world. Mm. Luminous powdery sky blues and barely there pastels will speak to the need for softness and for balance and will help support physical and mental health. That's interesting. That. Um, they also predicted French blue, a pretty cornflower bill, blue, will be appearing increasingly in furnishings and accessories. I love that. The sky apparently is the limit with its feel with its feel good tint. I like it. I do too. Yeah, but I think it pairs well with green. Exactly, and on, yeah. all of these colors have paired well with green. Everybody, totally. Um, but every single one of these colors, the visuals that we're looking at, it's nothing. Nothing about them is literal. You know, so there, mm-hmm. there's interest in them. There's, there's a range. There's, there's a shift and a twist to the, to the key, man. Like it's not, I don't know. It's not the eighties same blue. It's not the eighties same orange. It has mm-hmm. a more interesting turn on it. It has more depth. And Hopefully because I think, we have more depth, right? We I also think there's plenty of room for interpretation for everybody 100%. to make one of these seven colors theirs and just start to champion it and to try it on. Yeah. Right. Whatever way suits you best. But be bold and surround yourself in color. It's good for the soul. Cheers. It really is. I love it. Thanks so much for listening, guys. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening. If you like our show, please leave a five-star rating. 